Hello, my name is Mark Anthony Dubois Jr. and I was born July 4th, 1986. Today I want to say thank you for tuning in to try and figure out some more about your dog. Today I want to talk about something that I'm pretty sure I've talked about this, but I just want to say it again today because uh, I got some interesting comments that just, just sometimes I got something I got, I'm like a hundred videos behind unfortunately because I just don't have enough time, enough this to talk about these dogs because there's so much that just really needs to be talked about that a lot of people are not getting the, the, the full understanding here of like how to be able to have a simply a nice dog. Not this well-trained, this well this, this all this, but just have a nice dog. A dog that is just cool to be around. A dog to just be able to just take anywhere that you go. A dog to just be able to hang out when you want to be able to hang out. A dog that just gets off the couch and you just say, hey, sweetie, can you just get off the couch? Just like, okay. A dog that just doesn't really just give you so much pushback. They're going to have a little times in there that the dog is just a dog. And they're going to kind of look at you like, no, I don't want to do it. But it, it doesn't get to the point that it's like some dangerous looking thing it's just it's just a quick little I, i'm asking i'm telling and get the heck off man get off you can just change your language like get, get, get off man stop stop doing it stop treating me like that right now and the dog just responds to you and 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 the number one thing that i'm gonna <laughs> i'm gonna say something right now that i get I, I get why i'm gonna get pushback on what i'm about to say right now and it just is what it is you do not have a dog training issue you have a human being issue that you do not have patience you do not have the understanding on how to just do without getting frustrated. You have too much anger. You have too much frustration. You have too much of this stuff, and this is why your dog is, what I'm going to say, is confused. It is a matter of a lack of patience is why our dogs are looking like a mess. And today, the most unfortunate thing. This is why, for me, I'm just not, I'm not in the game to talk bad about any trainer I see. All I could do is talk good about every single trainer I see. I don't know what's wrong with me today in my life, but I can only see the good stuff in them. And, there's, and one thing that there, there's this guy that said something just that was life changing to me, that the, the dog trainer, what's his name, uh, Larry Crone, he said, you all may not agree with my methods. You may not agree with how I use an e-collar, how I use a prong collar and how I use my treats. He's like, but you know one thing that you have no choice but to look at and just say, I see what you're saying, is my dogs look really good. And I was like, dude, that is, that is very true. Because one thing that I'm going to say about majority of all the people on the planet today, they get a lot of pushback on their training techniques and they're training this, they're training that. They have some really, really nice looking dogs. They got just the, the, the best of the best looking dogs. Like the one guy everyone wants to hate so much today that I had to see in person to understand. But the, the Mr. Dog Daddy, he has the nicest freaking looking dogs of anyone that I still have yet to see. He puts these dogs anywhere in any situation and they're hanging out, they're doing what they're doing and they are just the nicest, the nicest of the nicest dogs. The most calm, the most relaxed, the most chill, the most just hanging out and just being. The nicest of the nicest dogs. And you know what comes, what makes that in dogs is patience. It has nothing to do with that next training technique. It's patience. It's knowing that it's going to take time. I do have techniques and methods to be able to say, I can make it, the thing that I like to use today is, is perfect, as someone said to me. I know how to put on a good show. I can make a good show. I can make it look really good right here, right now. I can make it look like we got everything looking right. I know how to do that, and I don't know why. And some people on this planet just know how to put a show on. And unfortunately for me, one of the main things that I've learned right away, real quick, with working with dogs and helping people, is you want to see that show. You want to see this, what looks like chaos one minute, Five minutes later, it looks really good. You want to see that as a people. And then you're wondering why my dog isn't actually getting any better because that's not real. It's a show. It's a TV show. It's for appearances. It's, it's to look good in the moment. But as far as having the long-term good-looking stuff, your number one training method that you need to focus 100% of your time on is patience. Knowing that when I sat down to this girl, like what, eight, nine times by now, I'm not verbally saying it because she doesn't understand the words. She understands it by the leash. That I just keep following through every single time, regardless of what I'm doing. Even if I'm in the middle of talking right now, I have no choice but to sit here and follow through and say, this is what I'm looking for. This is what I want. Every time she moves, she gets up, this is what you do. And every time she gets up, I'm not like getting, oh my goodness, oh, I'm just down. Hey, down. Hey, down. Hey, get, get down. Oh, you messed up again? Cool down. And in my mind, this is one thing that can help people with their patience out. The more times that I help her right now and telling her what I want, the more and the faster I'm going to be able to get results. As opposed to getting frustrated after two times of them getting up, ah, I just quit. I just walk away and I don't want to do this anymore. That's why you're having what I'm going to say is frustration with your dog. And it's your, you're not really getting the success that you're looking for. That patience of just standing and doing it. 
I'm gonna say this because I've tested this multiple times over this past, so three years now, I've been doing this. The method that I talk about is doing nothing, going places and doing nothing, and just being and just experiencing and just making stuff happen. And I'm watching this dog again, and I can do this over and over with many dogs to just get the exact same result that I'm gonna say. It, it, it's a matter of doing nothing but giving the dog the leash and telling this dog what I want. So this is where, for me, I, I'm just gonna have to classify and put myself in a specific stance that everyone has. Some people are on the purely positive side of things, some people on the balanced side of things, and I am on the fourth side of things. I'm not giving a dog a choice, I'm giving a dog a leash. But this is just my understanding of the reality of it, people. If, if you got someone telling you that they are force free and there's a leash on a dog, that's a, they're a liar. You're straight up liar. You're not giving the dog the freedom to do whatever it wants. Keep that dog with you, no leash, no equipment, no nothing, and tell it to stay with you and keep a treat in that dog's face and make it, I'll give it to you. If you keep a treat in its face and the dog stays with you, cool. But the second that you put a leash on a dog, you are forcing something. That's force. That is dictating. That is being a ruler. That is being an enforcer. That is what that is. And I don't care what anybody's got to say on that. And that's just the facts, the matter of fact on a fact. And I don't go to the, the purely positive side of it because I don't give treats. And I don't go to the balance side of it because I don't go to the treats and to the pressure. I just go to straight to force. I just put the leash on the dog and I do nothing. And I go places. I go for walks. I see people. I meet people. I talk to people. I stand out here. I stand in my front yard. I stand in my backyard. I go to the side, the side field. I go to the back field. I go to everywhere. I go to the park. I go to the trail. I go to the store. I go, I go everywhere. I do everything. And I just take this dog with me. And I put her on this leash and I'm forcing her and not giving her a choice. And after some time, after some time, this dog just starts to come to me. And this is the part where I'm going to say that I think we as a people are getting confused with what we're, what we're actually looking for. Because we got all this mumbo jumbo of I got to train this, I got to train that, I got to do this. Because in reality, the one thing I'm going to say is the more of this said training stuff that you're putting in, the more you're getting a show. Something that looks good in the moment, but then the reality of the everyday of it, it just looks like chaos. And that's why for me, I don't really... This, this is challenging because I am for hire for a dog trainer and unfortunately I have to do what the public is looking for, is looking for that show. And I can give you that show and people are willing to pay a lot of money for this show and I don't understand it. And sometimes I'm not gonna lie, I feel a little guilty sometimes with the amount of money people are willing to pay for someone to put a show on for them to just see oh, oh, it look good in the moment and then it's still not all that great. And then they're still happy because at least they saw it for a little bit of time. I guess that's the concept of buying some tickets to go to the Super Bowl game. You can go in live and see it for $2,500 for two tickets. Oh, I think it's actually like $2,500 from per ticket. And, and you went for the show. But you, in reality, you could have watched it at the house and paid nothing and just watched it and did what you did. But you went, you, you, you wanted the show and you were excited about the show and, and you just wanted to be all in the show and you were willing to pay a crazy amount of money to just be in that show, in the middle of it. But as far as like the, the end, where are we? you're not actually really anywhere at the end of the day. You just were paid for a show. And that's something that, you know, I'm trying my hardest to get out of, but it's hard to get out of and hard to communicate to most all people that think that what they want is a TV show as opposed to reality. And what I really want to be able to give to people is reality. And that's the whole reason I started making YouTube videos of talking about dogs. You know, I, didn't, I talked about dogs for a couple years ago, but I had to get off it because I wasn't in a good place in my life at that time. I was like very, very hostile. <laughs> and things weren't all that great. So then I had to have a revelation of life. And that's why a whole change in my channel just switched to, I've got hundreds of videos of talking about my understanding of coming to my faith, of being able to relax and calm myself and give myself peace and find out a, a different way of being able to live in this life. And then I was like, something happened. I was like, I got to talk about dogs again because I keep seeing the same stuff going on over and over and over everywhere I go. And I want people to understand this. Understand this. Get out of the show of the dog training and get into the reality of working with your dog. Get out of the show. Stop wanting a TV show for your dog. Stop thinking that that's where you're gonna find your results. Stop thinking that that's where you're gonna get the help. And this is the part with me that why majority of all of my work is, what do you call it, pro bono. I do for free. I show up with free consultation. I show you what to do because there is no money in showing people how to have reality dog handling skills, reality dog getting better, the reality of your dog looking really nice. The reality of it is it's going to take time. The reality, reality of it is I could get your dog to stop said reacting at people and dogs and everything this really fast. But at the same time, as fast as I can get him out of it, it's as fast as that dog's going to want to jump back into it again. And I don't like that. I want the dog to just understand day by day, not even. Some of these dogs I'm working hour by hour, hour by hour. I want the dog to understand this new shift that we're headed to. 
because the faster we just get it right now, the faster I'm telling you that it's, it's not done. They're still like in it. So you have to slowly but surely build them to be able to get to a very, very nice point. And all I do is I put this leash and I put an extreme amount of force on the dog of staying with me and not allowing the dog to go anywhere. And this leash, I'm teaching uh, multiple things all at the same time. I'm teaching a recall. I'm teaching a stay. I'm teaching to hang out with me. I'm teaching a down. I'm teaching all these, I'm teaching calm down. I'm teaching relax. I'm teaching patience. I'm teaching calmness. I'm teaching all of these things all right this second with this dog in specific. And you say, how you teach a recall? She can't leave me. And if she tries to, she's gonna hit the end of this leash and she's gonna have to come back. She's gonna realize I gotta stay really close to this guy. This guy is making me stay real close. I gotta do everything that this guy has. And I'm telling her, you can't get up right now. So I'm putting very, 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 very strict rules on this dog right now of saying, I, I'm not even allowing you to stand. I'm telling you to lay down. I want you to do this. I'm putting very strict rules. And that strict rules is what is bringing her a sense of relaxation, of understanding she doesn't need to do anything but just that. She doesn't need to think anything through. What, what, what can I do this? What can I do that? Can I do this? Can I do that? Can, what about this? What about, I'm saying no, just do this. And this is bringing her that calmness. This is what's gonna be able to make her look phenomenal in not even a year's, shoot, I, in six months, this dog is gonna be a pristine looking dog. She's already getting there. I can already stop at the side of a trail, sit at a bench, hang out. She just lays down, she just hangs out, sees people, sees dogs, sees balls, sees kids, sees everything and just hangs, just looks like this, just hanging out. Day one I got her, heck no, she wasn't doing that. She was jumping and going all wild. But it's a matter of, I'm putting very, very strict rules. I'm telling her what I'm looking for, but not in a way where when we think of someone that says, you're a forced trainer, like you must be abusing the dog. I'm gonna sit here and say, if I'm trying to give this dog a treat right now to convince her to do this, to me, that's manipulation to the point that that's, I don't like using that word, but it's evil, man. That's evil. That's so confusing, giving such conflicting information to the dog. And, and, and it's just, I know it doesn't make sense when I say that because it sure as heck didn't make sense to me the first time I heard that. The first time I heard a, 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 a Mr. Robert Hines say, if you give a dog a treat, you, 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 it's punishing the dog. It's like, that's just, that's stupid. It doesn't make sense. And it's taken me in reality months and months and months and months to just really think all of this through and really just, just, just have to soak it all in and really just have to like ponder on this idea and wondering what am I doing as a human being with my dogs, that I'm seeing completely different things go on than what I see other people are doing. And that one thing that I know for a fact that I'm doing is patience. And the one thing that I know for a fact, every one of these trainers' dogs that I see that look really good. I mean, there's many of trainers on this YouTube that you, these guys got some amazing looking dogs and they have patience, patience. They do not have the best of the best training, uh, uh, what do you call it, techniques and all this stuff. They do not have all that. They have patience. They have the willingness to want to follow through every time regardless. They have the willingness to go outside when it's raining and still walk the dog. They have the willingness to go out there when it's freezing cold and snowing. They got the willingness to go when it's 120 degrees outside. They got the willingness to keep on working at it even if they got a bum knee right now. They got the willingness to keep on doing that. And that's what's going to make the dog look really, really good. I got the willingness right now to say to myself, this is what I'm looking for from this dog. And I am not going to quit, give up, detour, alter until we, I'm getting what I'm looking for. And I'm going to stay at it and stay at it and stay at it and stay at it. And I'm going to overwork my own self to make sure that I can get what I'm looking for to, to give the, make, the, make things very, very clear. When you give up and you just get frustrated, you get irritated, that's where things get, get so wild, so crazy, so just, who know, the dog doesn't know what's going on. Because it's like, well, how come this time over here, but this time over there? Whereas when you make it very easy, you give the, that, that, that dog that simple thing of saying what you're looking for from them, and you just stay at that month after month, you're going to notice pretty much all, of, not all of your problems. You're just going to have issues. You're still going to have issues. And nothing is just so perfect and so amazing. But the times that you're starting to have struggles, you start to have, uh, trying to get down, the start, times you start to have struggles, you're going to be able to get through those struggles without it having to be this, this whole out, just burst, outburst of just chaos and madness. A dog that's showing teeth at you and growling and, and jumping all on you and being pushy and doing all that. You're just going to have a dog that's just going to it's gonna look at you and you're gonna look at it like, you dog, you dang dog. Like I'm telling you to stop doing this. And, and you have no choice but to get, get in and follow through and be able to get that dog to understand what you want. And a lot of this, this is just stuff that I do all day, every day to let her know. I know she's, she's, she's 
similar to how my border collie is. She's so in tune with everything I'm doing. If I if I'm laughing, if I'm joking, if I'm if I'm running, if I'm walking, if whatever I'm doing, if I'm chasing something, she's so in tune with like not not this dog's weird because she's she's not so much as to please like that dog, but she's just she's just there. She's like wants to be in the middle of it. She's like, what's going on? I can't. I want to be a part of. Are you chewing on that? I want to be a part of. What she's looking at? I want to be a part of that. So so I have to explain to her at all times. There's times that you pay attention to times that you don't need to, and that doesn't just come through training that comes through living and being with dogs that's the one thing that i think that there's the biggest disconnect that we don't live with dogs anymore we just have them in the background and i don't care if that dog is sleeping in your house 24 7 you're not living with it because you're not interacting you're not with it you're not out doing work with it you're not working on your car for instance you're not even raking up the leaves in your backyard and having your dog there with you you're not washing your car and having your dog there with you you're not like folding your clothes and having your dog there with you. You're not going to, 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 to walk to the parks and to, to doing anything and having your dog there with you. I don't know how many times I hear a day that I'm at, I'm at the lake or I'm at the trails doing what I'm doing and they're all, oh, we should have brought so-and-so. We should have brought our dog. We should have, but you, you never, you're not living with your dogs. You're not doing anything with your dogs. And the more that you do with your dogs and the more patient you are with your dogs, that's how you're going to have a nice dog. And there's just... There's, there's no money in that. And that's why I want to say this as much as I possibly can over and over and over and over and over. Like I said, I'm going to say again, I am teaching a recall in this dog right now. But she knows she has to stay close to me. So if she were to even get up and to go two feet, she's wrong. She needs to come back. I'm telling her, I'm giving her that guidance. I'm telling her to stay with me. I'm telling her to calm down. I'm telling her to stay down. I'm telling her to relax. I'm telling her to not jump on me. I'm telling her not even to sit right now. I'm telling her a lot right now. There's a lot of communication going on in this 30 minute video I'm about to make. The majority of y'all don't do in two weeks worth of work with your dog. This is why my dogs are gonna always excel so fast because I live with them. I do stuff with them. I'm always interacting with them. I'm always looking at every little scenario, every, every time, every day before we eat. There's a whole thing that goes on with what we're doing before we eat our food. There's a whole thing that we're doing while I'm preparing the food. There's a whole thing I'm doing. Uh, Shadow, all done? Go home. There's a whole thing that, that I'm doing always, all the time, with every single one of my dogs, all day, and, and with everything that I'm making happen. I'm out here moving wood somewhere, and these dogs are out here moving wood with me. I mean, <laughs> this dude even picks them up and he'll carry it with me. It's just the cutest thing. He's trying to help out. Everything I'm doing. I'm out there cleaning my garage the other day. They're out there cleaning the garage. I'm out there, uh, what is I'm moving tools from a shed to a garage. They're out there moving tools from a shed to a garage. We're doing work together all the time. And that is what gives you a really, really, really nice dog. A really nice dog is putting a leash and forcing. This is the part that I know a lot of people don't like to say, and I don't even like to say it. But it just is what it is. You want to force the dog to start to bond to you because the dog does not naturally do that. Dogs naturally are just free and do whatever the heck they want to do. So I have to build a bond here. How do I build this bond so that a dog understands me and listens to me? I can't use it. I, this is the part where, where I'm going to say that majority of us are failing because we're trying the trickery stuff. We're trying the treats. We're trying the toys. and We're trying this. And that's not getting the dog to understand who you are. I want the dog to know me. And the more th that I had that dog with me, and I forced that dog with me with this leash, this dog is going to un understand me. It's going to know me. It's going to be able to read me. It's going to study me. Like she's st already starting to pay attention when I laugh or when I change my pitch or when I dis. She's starting to understand me. She's starting to know what, what makes me happy. She's starting to understand what, what irritates me. Starting to understand what, what makes me want to just have to change and have to say no to her. She's starting to read me and she's starting to understand me. She's starting to get in tune with me. She's starting to just study all of me. She's what I'm going to straight up say. I'll just go straight to the harshest sound of words to just make it what it is. But she's in prison. She's in jail right now. I don't know which one's the word. Pr pr prison is the bad one. She's, she's in, in a, a, a high secure max prison right now. And the only thing she can do is study me. She can't do anything else but just study me because everything else is coming through me. And that's how the dogs start to really listen to who we are as humans with us having nothing. And now if I give this dog a treat, you watch her look even better. Now if I give her a toy, she'll look way better. But if I start that way, we're not, she doesn't know me. She doesn't know what makes me happy. She doesn't know what irritates me. She doesn't know what saddens me. She doesn't know what frustrates me. She doesn't know. She's just trying to guess. And that's what I see most dogs in confusion because they're going to guess what's going on with you. That's why when the dog is starting to play chase, 
and you're trying to get it and the dog is looking back at you, smiling, having a good old time because it doesn't know how to read the frustration in your body because it hasn't spent enough time with you. It doesn't know who you are. And we can't just get a dog and put it in the house and think that it knows who we are. That's so foreign. That's so weird. We, we are taking an animal and expecting it to just do something because we say, no, we have to let that dog know who we are. And the dog needs to spend a lot of time with us to recognize that. That's why my Border Collie knows we did a lot. I don't know why when I got him, he was a puppy. We was driving all kinds of places. I had lots of doctor's appointments and they were all an hour, hour and a half away. So we're spending three hours in the car a day, plus at the house, hanging out, doing all my work every day. He was always with me. So this is why every single little motion that I move in my, in my being, if I'm laughing, if I'm sad, if I'm frustrated, if I'm irritated, if I'm anything, he knows, he reads that because he studied me. He knows me. And that's what this dog is just now finally understanding. He didn't know me before. I would take him out and I'd work him in school and I'd put him back in his kennel. Take him out, work him in the school, put him in his kennel. He had no idea who I was. And then when he fi when we finally got together, he, he, he I don't know, I could talk stories about this dog. This dog's crazy. He used to be crazy. Like, how are y'all's dogs? And you just like, oh my goodness, my dog, this, my, I'm telling you, that's what this thing was right here. And that's what we had to work past that so that he understood, he can understand who I am. And the biggest thing is, uh, we good girl, you don't need to fight that one. The biggest thing is, he, they need to be able to know who we are with nothing, with no trickery. That's why I never really got him to understand me because day one, I'm coming out with treats. I'm coming out, treat, treat, treat. He never had to look at me to see me. What am I doing? So that's why when I would get frustrated, this boy would just run away even harder and even faster because he didn't know who I was. And this is the foundation and the only thing that I'm gonna say that majority of all of us just really need to focus on be with your dog. Do stuff with your dog. Go places with your dog. Make stuff happen with your dog. I know your dog might be jumping and going and doing. Then get yourself a distance so that you can be out with your dog. So that you can be at a distance and get your dog to calm down. And then your dog can look at you and see that you're calm. And it can start to trust you. It can start to respect you. So you're fine. Everything's okay. So we can go into this together. But when you're, you're not doing that, your dog doesn't know who the heck you are. That's why you're having the most problems right now. That's why there's no dog training stuff on the planet that's gonna help you with your dog, man. Because you're, you, you don't, the dog doesn't know who you are. And then when you try to come in with too much pressure, yes, the dogs, that's where the show comes on, man. I could do that, I know how to put a show on. And for a while I was like, I wanna get into that because I, I like seeing how people do that and, and it's, it's fun. It's fun to make people smile and get them laughing and people can see like oohs and ahs and this is cool and this is great, that, it's cool, but it's not real. And I have a blockage in me that doesn't allow me to do fake stuff. I have to do real. And I've been doing a lot of fake stuff recently. It's hard for me to get out of it because it's, it's so easy for me to do. But what, what is real is time and patience. Patience and time. And put those two things together. And patience and time and doing stuff. And putting all of that together, that's what's going to give you a really, really, really nice dog. That's what's going to give you uh, Oreo, where are we going? Come here. Uh, where are you going? Get down. Uh, you get down too. Uh, Oreo, get down. <laughs> Patience, time, and doing stuff. That's dog training right there. That's the real, what I'm going to say 99% of people are looking for. There's that 1% that does all the sports stuff. There's the 1% that does the, the farm working stuff. There's a the 1% that does, does the extra, that's in protection sports and in all this other stuff. But 99% of people, you need to put a leash on a dog. And I'm gonna just go straight up and just use the straight up words that it is, people. Force the dog to stay with you until the dog understands you and then the dog is no longer gonna be forced to be with you. It wants to be with you. That's why every one of my dogs, like right there, he gave me that pushback. I'm always gonna get a little bit of a pushback. But it doesn't come down to some hostile, we gotta go crazy and, and be a little wild. He was a little slow with coming back. He kind of looked at me and he was like, I don't really wanna go. He gets, uh, this is the part where I, you know, I've, I've gone to this dog school and try to pay attention to this stuff, but uh, uh, talk about if dogs get jealous or not. But when I'm with this dog, this dog gets all in his feelings. <laughs> He's all like, uh, but I don't, I don't know what that is. He, she's the only one so far that's ever done that to me. And uh, I know, I don't want you even itching nothing right now. I'm sorry, girl. I'm being very, very strict right now. You'll be fine. He's a good girl. But uh, he gets really, really jealous with this little, this little dog right here. So there's definitely a little, a little competition that goes on with it. But it, it's just a matter of getting up and doing as much as you can. Living with your dog. The more that you are living with your dog, the more that you are going to find and have that success that you're actually looking for. The more that you are just ignoring your dog. 
and putting it off to the side. The more that you're just watching, I'm straight up and go crazy right now. The more that you're just sitting here and even watching my video without having your dog on a leash while you're watching the video of mine, you, the more that you're not doing what you need to do. That's something I can recommend to anybody and everybody. I mean, I can even show you, I don't want to because I don't want to teach this dog different habits that I need her to do. But I might even, I can't get another dog, man. I need to get rid of a dog. Somebody needs a dog, I gotta get rid of a dog so I can get another dog. But uh, I could just stand here and make my video every day and you just stand there and watch me do my video every day and you're gonna watch your dog get better. That's simple. You're gonna watch your dog get better because you're just gonna stand there and have nothing. Stand there and do nothing. And this is why for me, I like personally putting them in a, a crazier scenario up front. Putting them in the front yard putting them in the park, putting them somewhere so that they have all this stuff to sniff around. She's got all this. She's learning what her rules are. She's like, how far can I go? And I'm giving her a little bit of, I'm not trying to be too strict, but be strict. Give her a little bit and just to see what she's going to do right now. But I like to just let them have to see the whole world. Right now, she's learning. I can't chase a chicken because she's stuck to me. She's stuck on me. She's learning what the boundaries are. She's knowing I can't just go run off to get to that dog. I can't run off to get to that dog. I can't run off. To, I can't jump all on me right now. There's times that she can and there's other times that she's not allowed to. She's learning so much right now. That's so much of just standing and just doing nothing at all. Nothing at all. And just having the dog study you and recognize who you are and realize who you are so that that dog can come to you when they are ready. I mean, still, still today, she's still not ready. I've had this, dog, I don't know how many weeks now, six, seven weeks, and she's still not 100% in tune with me. And I'm not gonna rush that. I could fake like rush it, make it look good. If I've given her treats all the time, she's gonna look really good. But I want her to come to me when she's ready to. And, the, and when she's ready to, we're gonna have a very, very, very nice relationship. I put my leash on any of my other dogs at this moment and they all come right up to me. They're all hugging me. They're all looking for me to give them pets. They're all wanting that affection. And that's what I'm looking for. She's still not there yet. And I don't, I'm not gonna push it. That's why this dog is much different than any that I've worked so far. She's very, very independent. That's the word that I really like to use. She's very independent. She's just very, I know what I'm doing and I got this, I can take care of it. So it, I have, I'm coming at her even at a slower approach than any other dog that I've ever helped, dealt with so far. And, and still in its slow approach, she already loose leech walks next to me anywhere, everywhere I go. I don't care what distraction is around. I didn't force it, I put, she walks on a harness. Put her on a harness and she's pulling. I even got a bungee leash on my harness with her. Not even something static that I can hold her with. And if I go ha have this leash, I can get her to do all kinds. Like, hey, or convince this dog to stay down right now. But it's, it's, it's a matter of doing it over and over and over again. And doing it and going places and making stuff happen. And seeing what they're scared of. Seeing what they're excited about. And getting them through that and working them through it. And doing it over and over and over again. No one can do it for you. Only you can do it yourself. And the number one thing that I'm gonna say is patience, man, patience. The more patient you are, the better your dog is going to look and the way, 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 way faster you're gonna get the results that you're actually looking for. Not some TV show, oh, the TV show is over with and now where are we? Now you're just into some, who knows what's going on, you got no sense of control, you got no sense of anything happening and things are just wild. And this is how I convince, this is what I spend 99, 95% of my time on, because this is the time that is gonna get the dog in danger. This is, the, this is the, what I do. This is how I convince a dog how to come back to me when they're chasing a deer. This is how I convince a dog how to stop chasing chickens. This is how I convince a dog to stop running after other dogs and other people. Because if he tries to go to people, I'm gonna pull the dog this way and say, you, you go this way. If, if she's trying to run at the squirrel, oh, I'm gonna pull her back and say, we're going, we're going this way. This is where we're going. We're not, we're not going towards that. And I do that over and over and over and over and over. Days, weeks, months, years, over and over and over again. And then I do not have to worry about it anymore because the dog understands what the basic fundamental rules are. You are not allowed to take off. You are not allowed to go anywhere away from me right now. Now, when I tell you that we're in a said safe zone that you can go run and chase, such as a dog park, go run and do what you do. But if we're not in that place and we are especially hooked up on this leash, you are not taking off after anything. And I'm teaching her that right now. I'm gonna spend the majority of my time in what I call is forced dog training. The same as what anyone would say is, is if you're a balance trainer that's, that uses leash and treats or you're just using treats and you got a leash on a dog, this is the forced part that I spend the majority of my time on because this part they need to understand the most. 
because this is the part that's going to get them in danger if they do not listen to it. If they think that they could just go off and do what they want when they want, that's what's going to get your dog in danger. And right now I'm convincing her. I'm, I'm, that's not even the right word. I'm just going to use the words that I just, in my brain, know. I'm forcing her to stay with me. I am not giving her a choice. I'm not giving her an option. I'm telling her what I want. And I'm demanding that this is what she's going to do. And this is what dogs, in just my opinion of, again, I'm going to say I don't know it all, but this is the foundation that all dogs need to understand, us as human beings, that you are with me and I am with you. And you do not get a chance to just leave me when you want. And I'm not going to try to get you to stay with me because of something that I have other than just myself. Myself is why you are going to be here. Myself, that's it. That's all that, that's all that we're, we're, we're doing here. And that's what the dog needs to understand. Once she understands to stay with me and just myself, now I can give this dog a treat to make her do extra stuff if I want it. But I'm not gonna start that way. I'm not gonna start that way. And that, that's why for me, again, I'm gonna say, that treats do a lot for a dog. But as far as that, that five to 10% that puts your dog in danger, they just don't work, man. They don't work and they don't work. And everyone out here knows that they don't work. And that's why there's some people out here that get so butt hurt when they see a dog that looks pretty good because they don't understand how to get theirs that way because their, stuff, their methods aren't working. And it doesn't have to come down to the fact of having to go be just crazy to the dog to get it to understand who you are. And that's the part where I think that there's that disconnect that we all want to say certain words and say certain terms. Because again, I am forcing this dog to stay with me every day when I take her for a walk and I put her on a harness. Now, someone can say to me, I don't approve of your slip leash, Mark. I don't like that. I don't use that. And I'm saying to you that I can convince this dog and any dog to do it with a harness. It's a matter of being patient and getting up and doing stuff and making stuff happen and doing it over and over and over again and taking your dog with you places, having your dog hang out with you and, ex and putting that expectation of this is what I'm looking for from you right now and holding firm to it and knowing that you, you, they're going to mess up. And you're going to fix them, and they're going to mess up, and you're going to fix them, and they're going to mess up, and you're going to fix them, and you're going to fix them, and you're going to fix them. And you're just going to keep doing it over and 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 over again. I don't know how many times I've gotten down to tell this dog to down, but I'm going to keep doing it over and over and over again. That's how you get a really nice dog. It's not a matter of me coming at her with a lot of hostility right now to try to force her to give a really crazy lease. I said, stay down. That's not going to help you. That's not going to help you. Short term TV show, yes, it's going to look good. But as far as the long term, what I'm looking for, <laughs> right here. She's like, I'm going to push the limits to the limits, man. This is just what dogs are. So I'm letting her know that's not what I want from you. I want you to stay down right here. And I got to have patience of just sticking with it and staying with it over and over and over and over again. This is what the dogs are begging for, for from us. This is what they're begging. Please tell me what to do, man, because I don't know what to do. Please, where do you want me to go? This is what dogs are, are just, this, this is my opinion, but this is what the dogs want, to tell them what to do. Tell them where to go. Tell them what, where to eat. Tell them how much they're going to eat so that we can make sure that they stay healthy. Tell them all these things. This is what they want. And the more that you're not doing that, the more that's why you're having so much pushback from your dog because the dog doesn't understand who you are. It knows you through a treat, you through a toy, you through excessive crazy praise and excessive petting them and touching them. It knows you through that as opposed to just knowing you by staying in and being and doing nothing, but just having them stay with you and telling them what it is that you're looking for. That's all that the dogs are, are, are needing from us. That's it. And it's something that, again, this is where it, it's, it's not a matter of what's the next training technique and the tra training term. It's a matter of, because right here, she's giving me some pushback for the first time. And this is where, in my opinion, where I find the most success. It looks good, it looks good, it looks good. She's, they're easy, they're easy, they're easy. And then they give you that little bit of pushback and I'm still going to stand there, not get frustrated, not get irritated, not get angry, and be very, very kind, and just say, this is still what I want. Then that's when I start to see a big, big difference in the dog. That's when the dog finally just says, wow, dude, like, what's up? How's it going? Like, you, 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 the word I'm going to use is consistent, but it's not the word that I really like. But she, they're just like, holy crap, dude, like, you, you on it. Like, you are always, always there. Like, you, you, you always on top of it. And that's, that's the leader that you want to be. The leader that's going to be there to show them that you messed up, cool, let's fix it. You messed up, cool, let's fix it. Uh, Oreo, get down. Uh, you, you messed up, cool, we'll just keep working at it. And keep working at it, keep working at it. I see you, man, get down. And keep working at it, keep working at it. Not that ruler that's going to come in and, and try to be mean and try to be evil and try to be manipulative. All those words are no good of a leader. And that's what treats give, manipulation. And you don't want to be a manipulator to your dog because they can smell through it all. 
<laughs> like literally, they can smell you when you have a treat and when you don't have a treat. So they listen to you very, very well when you have that treat, but when you don't have that treat, your dog is just blowing you off because your dog doesn't know you. Get your dog to understand you by, again, using the words that most people just don't like, but forcing the dog with this leash, the leash that has evolved the dogs to get closer to human beings in the beginning with. They understand these leashes. They understand them. They get what they are. No, 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 you're not taking his snacks. They understand what they are. And it's for us to sit here and guide them with everything that we're looking for. And the more that you do this, the better you're gonna see your dog be. It has nothing, I'm telling you, it has nothing to do with the next fancy piece of equipment, the fancy this, the fancy that. It has nothing to do with the, the next sport to even try to put your dog in, the next anything. The dog needs to just understand who you are. And once it knows you, it's gonna be able to read you. And once it can read you, then you could do, <laughs> it's so fun working with dogs to be able to get them to understand where to go and what not to do. It is so fun, thank you. Oh, come here, girl. You can go. You're not going to go anywhere, but you're going to go. <laughs> I know. She's a good girl. I don't know about y'all, but my female dogs are all, always so obsessed over food. Like, they just they just be super obsessed over food. But this, this here is what I want to see in the dog, that even when I take leash off, they understand that there's, there's boundaries that they can go. They can't go so far, they gotta stay so close. And it starts to get stuck in the dog's brain. And that's what gets the dogs to not chase things and not be digging on stuff you don't want them to, not going places you don't want them to go. They know they gotta stay close to you because they're, they're, they're your dog. They should be doing that. They shouldn't be so free, independent, they just take off and do whatever they want. That's where you're gonna get in danger. And I'm telling you, that's the part that gets them in danger. That's where you're, you're butting heads with the dog because the treats aren't quite working.